And one thing here, if you look at the shape of the hand trajectory here, so this green line here is the hand trajectory. So what do you see here in terms of shape? Um, kind of narrows. Yeah, so yeah, this yeah, this way here. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like an ellipse, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the long axis is going this way here. Yep. So if you draw a vertical line, maybe at the center of the ellipse here, then the low point occurs on the left side here. Mm -hmm. What this means is that you are dropping your hands are too much. Back here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you tend to have a stuck elbow issue with yes. this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So by just looking at the shape of the hand pad, we can easily see that. It should be more... It's more balanced here. Okay. So if you have a vertical line at the center of the ellipse, then at the low point it should occur okay. at the center here. So it should be like a U. Like a, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. And almost a, a circular. A circular. And if the low point is uh, on the right side of the vertical line, that means you're pulling the hands in. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, and then now, when this happens, when this happens, I ex expect a severely outward swing plane. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a look at the top view here. So let's go to the top view here, just to, to show this point here. Mm -hmm. Now this is the top view. So your swing plane, this large rectangle here <laughs> is your swing plane. So cool. It is uh, quite outward here. It should be like a square rectangle, right? It should be, it should be more toward the target line here. This is the target line. Cool. So it should be close to the target line. In the, in the uh, driver condition, it's uh, still slightly outward. Okay. But it's just a matter of one degree, on the average, one degree or less. But in your case, it's uh, severely outward here. And so why, um, why does a severe swing path like this, uh, it's like what, why is that bad? It's because, uh, as you see here, this is the hand pad, mm -hmm. to, uh, this is the clip head pad during the back swing here, yeah. and then down swing here. It, even in the back swing, if you look at the overall uh, shape here, again, we can come up with the, uh, an ellipse here. The ellipse is uh, rotated. Yeah. So it means that during the back swing, you tend to pull the clip in. And that's just inefficient power wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, overall, overall, you need to adjust the, the direction of the back swing motion and then also uh, the down swing motion. Okay. But more, uh, even worse mm. here is your yeah. hand, hand motion here. H hand motion, okay. Yeah. So this rectangle... Oh my God, it's even more... Yes. Yeah. This rectangle shows the hand motion plane. Yeah. It's even more outward than this. Huh. <laughs> so what happens is actually you, you have a really uh, outward hand pad, yeah. but your club cannot just go that way. If you really because swing you the club that way, yeah. you have really bad uh, block shot, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So by using your wrist motion, you are adjusting the to club like, head motion. To like bring it slightly more yeah. left. Okay. So you're flipping it, yeah. try to bring the club head more toward the target, but still it's not enough. So the club head also shows a severely outward uh, swing plane here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then in order to ultimately reorient the swing plane, then you have to work on your hand pad plane. Hand pad plane, okay. So, uh, you know, so you have a, a large outward uh, a direction gap. Mm -hmm. So your hand motion plane is a lot more outward than the swing plane here. And the most efficient is when the... When they are parallel to each other. Parallel, yeah. okay. Then the swing becomes really simple. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, the swing becomes really simple. And easier to just kind of apply. So then when the hand motion plane and the cl so clip head motion plane which is uh, called, uh, called the functional string plane. But uh, if these are generally in the same direction, then when you try to uh, control the direction, you just simply throw the hands uh, in the direction you want. Right? Okay. Cool. Then club will also move along that direction. Okay. But when you have a large angle gap here, then the direction your hands are moving is very different from, from the, the direction the club is moving. So they're opposing. Yeah. Mm. Got it. And then it makes the swing a lot more complex. Yep. Got it. And yeah. So this, this gives you a, a large uh, outward angle gap here. When this happens, the swing pattern becomes the so-called reverse spiral pattern. Okay. So let's go to the function swing plane here. So this is uh, 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 you know, basically showing your function swing plane. The function swing plane, the straight line here, 
This is calculated from your club head motion. Mm -hmm. So this represents uh, the plane of motion of your club yeah. near the impact. Okay. So if we extend this function swing plane all the way here, okay. and then show your club head motion relative to the swing plane. Yeah. Now, so this shows the off-plane motion. Okay. All these lines here show uh, off-plane motion of your club head okay. with respect to the swing plane. And then at the top, at the top, your club head is here. But then, as you start the downswing, the club head quickly <laughs> comes toward the swing plane here. Now, on the way down, the club head goes slightly below the swing plane. Yeah. So you have uh, this is called a negative deviation okay. from the swing plane. So the club head shows a negative deviation from the swing plane in the downswing. And in the follow-through, after your impact and um, in the follow through, you will see this large deviation, large positive deviation yeah, yeah. from the swing plane. This pattern is uh, classified as a spiral swing, a spiral. Uh, the reverse spiral a swing. Reverse spiral. Okay. There are three main types. The first one is a planar swing. In, in this one, your clever stays above the swing plane mm -hmm. in the downswing and also above the uh, swing plane in the follow through. Okay. And then these deviations are fairly well balanced. Okay. So then the swing plane serves as the lower boundary. So the club head stays above, but so out, out. It, it comes toward the swing plane in a good planar motion here, and then goes up slightly. Who's a pro, like um, KLR or something? For, uh, the, the, the one I use as a model is Grant Weight. Okay. Cool. Grant Weight, the 2015 swing. Uh, yeah, yeah. It shows a well balanced uh, deviation, well, positive deviation. So that's called the uh, planar swing. Planter. Yeah. Okay. And then the second one is a spiral swing. Okay. <laughs> In the spiral swing, at the top you have positive deviation. Yeah. It comes down here, and then in the follow through, the club head goes below the swing plane. Okay. So it shows negative uh, and that's deviation. Like the most common, probably. So when you have a uh, strong arm driven swing and pull the hands inward, yeah. what happens is uh, the club that goes below the swing plane in the follow through. Mm. So, so it shows a spiral path. Yeah. So it's called a spiral swing. This reverse spiral pattern is exactly the opposite. Got it. Okay. So here, the reason why you have this is you are bringing the hands down too much, okay. all the way down, and then later you have to flip it mm -hmm. so that the club head leaves the the swing plane quite a bit in the positive direction. Yes, okay. Among the three, actually, this is the worst uh, style here. For, for consistency or for power? Or for and power? also uh, the way you move your body. Really? Yeah, because essentially your body will, in, will uh, ob obstruct your arm motion. Yeah, because at least when you're going that way, you're using yeah, your yeah, body. Yeah, yeah. So the bottom line is the main rotating part of the body is uh, the thorax and above, mm -hmm. right? So, but thorax and the shoulder girdle, these are mainly serving as the axle. Yeah. And the, your arms and club form a chain. Yeah. And then, ultimately, by using the axial uh, rotation, yeah. you promote good motion of the chain, yeah. and then develop high speed of the club head. But uh, along the way, if your body blocks your arm motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, then you're going to stall, and then. Yeah. yeah, then you're interfering with the, your own motion. Yeah. Your, your body interferes with your own motion. So, so the arm, the arm should be somewhat, uh, you know, the arm motion should be, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, you have, should have a clean arm motion yeah. without any obstruction by your body. That makes sense. For yeah. that, you have to find a certain hand the pad mm -hmm. so that you don't have a stuck elbow issue. Yeah. And you, your, your body does not interfere with your body motion. Yeah. But if you start with the, quite the inward pad here, yeah. from here, then you have a stuck elbow. Mm -hmm. Then you have to slide the, oftentimes you have to slide the pelvis quite a bit to make a space here yeah, yeah. so that your elbow can come out. Mm. And then it causes a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So always uh, when you do, uh, this is like a, putting your button in the holes. Yeah. If you put the first the button right, yeah. then everything is okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the way down, if your first motion is uh, you know, causing trouble, yeah. then it has uh, consequences. Mm, yeah, cause then you're like, because the motion is okay. continuous here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is continuous. So what happens earlier affects the motion later. That makes sense. So if you look at the way you move, so from the top of the here, from here, 
You see, yeah. what you do is from here, you're turning the yeah. club like this. Initial motion of the uh, motion in the downswing is uh, you are letting the clip head go this way. Mm -hmm. So it's a too much uh, shallowing here, mm -hmm. intentional shallowing. Yeah. You shouldn't have uh, this kind of shallowing here. Rather, just the whole thing is moving. The body is driving everything here. And then let it go here instead of intentionally doing this action at the beginning of the downswing. So with this, with this, if you let the clip head quickly go down here, the, what happens is in terms of your elbow motion, your elbow is coming almost vertically down. Yeah. This way here. Yeah. And so by the time your club is uh, horizontal, so parallel to the ground, then if you draw a vertical line from the right shoulder, then your elbow should be already on that vertical oh, line. Oh, really? Here. By club parallel? Yeah. Okay. But uh, your elbow is way inside here. Interesting. Way inside. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good. Yeah. Mm. Cool. So, if your el the right elbow follows that path here, then you cannot really have uh, either um, squared or, you know, more inward swing path. Yeah, because you're your your elbow is in here, so you have to uh, throw it outward. So if uh, you have a good square impact, then it'll give you a block shot. Mm, yeah, yeah. If you try to bring the ball in, you try to spin it, then yeah. you have uh, sometimes you have a bad hook. Yeah, so it's like timing, and those are my two misses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's all because of uh, your swing plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, uh, in the first place. Really interesting. So yeah. then, in the global perspective, you need to adjust the swing plane, right? Mm, bring it more. So in order to adjust the swing plane, you have to change. The hand pad. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, your hand does the same thing, also you just shallow the club intentionally like this, yeah. then it's hard to change anything. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes I use the board like this. Oh, cool. Along the board. But uh, when you change the way your hands move, yeah. so hands stay up here, and then just to bring it down by moving the body, by rotating the body here, yeah. and then you have a straight pad from here to the, you know, where the handle should be at impact. Yeah, yeah. No detour. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. No yeah. traffic light here. No traffic. Yeah. Just a straight ex expressway here. <laughs> Bring it this way. It's easier to turn this way here. That makes sense. Yeah. Then you can adjust the, the swing plane. Cool. Okay. And more important, you can decrease the angle gap, direction gap between your swing plane and your hand oh, hand motion plane. Got it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So more than anything in your swing. The issue I see is uh, the severely outward swing plane, but even more outward hand pad. Hand pad. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that plus the ground, well, that's the main one. And then, and then, you, then the lateral. Part of the reason why you, you are not uh, shifting the body oh, laterally okay. lateral is because what you want to do is this here. Yeah. So you don't need the, this shift motion. Mm, got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this is the main issue that I see in your swing. Okay, cool.